Zimbabwe's last census in 2022, there are 62% of our population under the age of 25. In numbers, that is 22, sorry, there we go. In numbers, that represents 10 million people. There are three and a half million people between the ages of 14 and 25 and another six and a half million coming up under them, under the age of 14. That's a huge number. These are our future leaders. These are our potential parents. These are our businessmen, our workforce. These are the people that are generating our income. Now, thankfully, because there's so many people, we will not have a shortage of people around our bedsides caring for us in our old age. <clears throat> Our youth today have more choices open to them than any other generation. And in this fast-paced digital age, some of the jobs that they, that they may be doing have not even been invented yet. Traveling abroad has become the norm rather than the exception. And travel has never, ever been easier than before. It's never been more affordable. In fact, on the 13th of July, 2023, a record was broken with over 137,000 commercial flights in the sky at once. This is the world that our youth are going into. But are they prepared for it? Are they prepared with the life skills that are needed to live successful lives and to... Oh, this is moving, sorry. Are they prepared with the life skills that are needed to prepare them for life? Are our youth well-grounded, secure in their identity and purpose? Are they emotionally and mentally astute to handle the pressures of life? Are they prepared for the changing work environment and the demands of the business world? Are they capable of forging positive connections and relationships? Are they resilient to resist temptations? Or are they determined to overcome difficulties? If the answers to some of these questions are no, then our youth may be in trouble. Because the world is moving so fast that there is a danger that they will flounder. So how do we prepare our youth? How do we equip them with the living skills that are needed to face the realities of life? These are the life skills that I am talking about. A positive mindset. Self-confidence. Resilience. The ability to think creatively and critically and solve problems. Having a community mindset where they are respectful of their elders and for the people in the community. Being able to communicate to be able to manage conflict. These are the life skills that this new generation require. They say that life is a journey, and I'd like to take you on a journey with me today. So for our journey, we need a lot of documents, and the first of which is a passport. Your passport is the essence of your identity. Your passport has details in it, with photographs, your signature, your name. These are all features that uniquely identify you. It is essential to have a good foundation, to be sure of your roots, your culture, and yourself. But most people don't pause to question themselves about their identity. Realiz realizing our identity helps us understand ourselves. On my own journey, which I only sadly began in my 40s, my journey of self-discovery, I learned more about my, my identity. I now understand my motivations and my behavior. I am able to steer my path 
more directly. I'm in more control. I can see the weaknesses that I have and how to build them up. And I can celebrate my strengths without comparing them to the shortcomings of others. I've rediscovered my purpose for living, identified my values and clarified my goals, and am therefore more effective, productive, fulfilled and happier. Now imagine if young people were accompanied through the same journey at the beginning of their adult lives. They too can be more confident and more successful in life. The next thing we need when we go on a trip is a visa. To visit a foreign country, you need permission to enter. Now, when we go somewhere that is far away and un unknown to us, we need to understand who the people are. What is their culture? What are the things that we don't want to do to offend them? We need to be able to communicate with them effectively. A communication is what relationships are built on. It is learning to understand people, personalities, what's important to others. I'm sure you all know that there is tremendous amount of marital instability and divorce rates are high. And the th three main reasons for these divorce rates being so high are cited as personality differences, arguments, lack of communication. So it's no, no surprise that good communication and social skills prepare us to interact better. It helps us to foster strong relationships, both personally and in business. Communication skills help us to go further in life. And I love this African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. We are designed, we are designed to be social creatures. We are designed to live in community. We are designed to be building our futures together. Next on our journey, we'd need an itinerary. This is your plan. There are always so many sights to see and things to do in a new place, but we have so little time. And an itinerary helps us to put all of those things in place in the limited time that we've got. But what is the plan for the next generation? What is the plan for millennials and Gen Z? Studies show that the average time that Gen Z or millennials will stay in a job or study program is only two to three years. So imagine you as a parent investing in your four-year degree program for your delightful young adult, and halfway through they turn around and say, um, Mom, Dad, actually I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we can't alter the affinity for change that this new generation has, but we can prepare them for this migratory lifestyle. We can guide them as education shifts from rigid knowledge-based programs to adaptable skills-based learning. We need to set them up to be flexible, to think critically, and to apply the knowledge that they gather to whatever area in life they choose to pursue. The benefits of being intentional and planning and guiding them on how to plot out a career or study program and break down their vision into paths can set them up for success. Obstacles can be more easily overcome and get back to the intended path, just like Google Maps does when you go off-road off or if you've encountered a traffic jam. It'll just bring you back to where you should be going. Now, I'm a teacher and I love to plan. I have my plans for the week for my lessons, but ironically, I never follow the plan exactly. And a plan actually gives me the freedom to diversify with confidence. And this is what we need to be teaching our young people, to have that plan so that they can change it and carry on and go forward. Next, we move on to money. Of course, money is absolutely essential to life. <laughs> and you'll find living at home, your expenses are quite minimal, hopefully. <laughs> but once you move out, your expenses tend to sky, go sky high. There's tickets, accommodation, food, transport, and all these needs have to be met through some kind of monetary provision. Now, just as money supports us in life, our young people need a support system. They need this effective support system that surrounds them, their friends, their family, and their community. 
invested communities, support aspiring individuals' goals, ideas, and needs. We need to teach our youth to establish strong relationships, to seek out the people that will help them and mentor them wisely. We need to teach our young people to create a network that will help them grow, to seek out professionals in their community that will teach them about business, financial literacy, and entrepreneurship. Now, finally, we're nearly ready to go. We can book our tickets. Now, 20 years ago, we used to have travel agents for this job, didn't we? And they had this specialist knowledge. They would enter this amazing secret code into a computer and out would pop your ticket. Nowadays, of course, we've got Google Flights or any other search engine to book our tickets, and we're all travel agents. But just as we used to have that specialist support to book our tickets, we used to get expert guidance from our friends and our family, or our parents and our families, about life skills. Cultural norms and values used to be modeled at home, but there have been dramatic changes in the family structure, and now we see more nuclear families, people moving away from their homelands, and absent, busy, or otherwise overwhelmed parents. So our children receive less life skills instruction in the home now, and parents have unofficially handed over this duty to schools. Now, schools focus on academic instruction, as they must, because they are tasked with producing these great students with these A-star exam results. But are the students adequately pre prepared for life? I believe that it takes a village to raise a child, which is another one of my favorite African proverbs. And I believe that we need to return to the village because we have lost this community that we used to have. Our children are no longer learning from families. They're no longer learning from our communities about life skills. So we need to return to the village. We need to return because the village gives us so much in terms of life skills. It gives us institutional knowledge, our grounding, our identity. It teaches us about family values, community and relationships. Our community and our village gives us support and guidance and care and even discipline. With 10 million people coming up in Zimbabwe in our youth, we cannot put the, the onus onto one set of people to make sure that our children are trained in life skills. We all need to take up the cause. We need to encourage parents to be more engaged with the younger generation, with the children in their lives, modeling life skills in the home effectively. In schools, we need to include comprehensive, exciting life skills programs by trained teachers, not fill the time as in some of the schools that we have today. We need to rely and take advantage of professional trainers and coaches who desire to see our kids succeed. Outsourcing training, workshops, and gap year programs. But to have the greatest effect on society, we need everybody. We need the communities. Think about your own sphere of influence. Think about young people in your life. Identify someone you could mentor that you could speak into their life, that you could help them to understand and grasp the life skills that are essential for success. You have life and wisdom to share. Whether you're in your 20s or your 60s, you have something valuable to impart to the next generation. If you intentionally seek out a young person to mentor, you can help them to be more prepared and successful for life. We want better for our kids, and our kids want better, so we should do better. Let's start the conversation about how learning life skills can better prepare the next generation for success. So talk with your children, with your families, talk with your schools, the teachers, the leaders in your communities, but most of all, talk with each other. Thank you.